Hello, and welcome to All My Art and Soul. I'm Michelle Holden, and this week is another painting journey on a 12 by 12 inch panel. As you can see, this is where we'll end up. These are the previous layers of what you just saw. And you can see there's a lot of texture, heavy paper, different things I glued on right at the beginning. And then after that, I added a layer of turquoise, scratched through it just to emphasize some shapes, then I let it rest. This week's video is will be a mixture of live recording while I'm working and also voice over. So, and sometimes I turn the painting, I'll turn it back. So stick to the end. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you love this content. So let's get started. So that is that layer done. Now, I don't know what you think, but it suddenly came together. And very interestingly so, I notice I put some of those um, handmade papers and the specks uh, became more obvious because of the translucency of the paper. So you just cover that up and what I usually do is just, I like the, my finger to make just a natural smudge. I may or may not like it later, but we'll let it dry and see what happens. Uh, darker colors dry lighter, lighter colors dry darker. So as I, as I knew I wanted something very translucent in this area, approaching this half circle, and then of course you have the circles going across, I probably will emulate this, but in a different way here, just so the eye doesn't drop off over there or some kind of mark, small, very tiny. I'm really liking this curvy linear uh, shape here. I may brush it a little bit with this background color. I can, uh, what I'll do to ensure that, um, I'll do that right now, is just put a layer of this high gloss, heavy, what is it again? Heavy gel, just so whatever I do, since I know the paper is delicate, um, I can do it carefully and then that'll dry. And I notice on a larger piece, which some, it depends what stage you're at, I didn't need to use my hair dryer this time because I worked over here and that dried over there, uh, but it, all, it doesn't always work out that way. Uh, so right now I'm just explaining the moves that I made and why and I'm really liking this texture amongst all the different types of um, it's like a quilty kind of feeling that I tend to end up with though unintentionally and I'm really liking it I know I could have left this light but I found that I stopped here so I continued this half circle, which seems to go through this piece, so it goes. I may do slider dots. I may just leave it alone. We'll have to see. And I think I will put a coat of gloss on that so I can do whatever I need to do. And if I don't like it, I can wipe it away. I added the black here to balance all this black over here. And also I put, whoops, I put the little bit of black here, so you can just see the balancing the weight of it. So I'm liking the neutrals and it's really looking better with the less really powerful saturated um, nickel azo. And I noticed this needed to become lighter as you go up, further up the painting. And I think I will even go back with this beige or a little lighter here. That was a piece of turquoise collage underneath, the same as this. 
and I'm liking that you can just just barely see it so um, as always I will let this rest a day or two see what I think and then it may have moved into the middle stage maybe the late middle stage suddenly I'm not quite sure um, so what I do is I take a picture of it I record it on my phone I usually use my iPad and then I can look at it from time to time sort of a generation removed I'm tempted to go in with my Posca markers but I won't because I really like to save that for the very very final stage and um, so that's this 12 by 12 on birch panel and um, we'll wait and see what happens so don't forget to uh, if you're liking this content and if you have any questions uh, about using panel versus paper versus canvas let me know um, I'm uh, trying to since I'm working to some some work of a series that I want to eventually um, get in a show or something I'm making sure I'm using uh, higher quality or um, paints on all my work now and just sort of leveling up a little bit and I'm just gonna cover I'm tempted to touch it but you know what I'm gonna listen to my instincts and just let it rest so I will see you in the next video for the next layer. So I'm back and this piece has rested just overnight and of course it's so good to just clear that um, that particular reactive mindset that I had while I was doing this piece, let it rest, and then look at it with fresh eyes. There's a piece that I plan to use, just tiny. And I am all of a sudden coming down to the late middle stage, I believe, because I'm liking what's going on. I don't want to interfere with this area of just space. And I like how it contrasts with all of the busy fractaled or quilted area in this in the lower right so then as I was going up the stairs and leaving my studio I glanced at it again and then looked at it at a different angle and then came right back and rotated it and it's so much more interesting this way. Now I don't know about the black. It definitely will go part way. It's a little heavy up there because now we've got this light so I'll carry that beige in and around and let it you know go down there somehow or maybe with collage. And this heavy uh, area is this paper. As you can see it's amazing I have a giant sheet of it and I only use little pieces and I need to find some more textured paper just not in horizontal or vertical uh, stripes if you want to call them stripes so I'm going to just go ahead and try to maintain this openness add a few uh, I might turn this rectangle black I'm not sure I'm going to try some different things and see see what happens with this phase so um, I'll just work without having to talk while I'm working and you can just watch and see what happens so I've increased the speed just slightly and um, I'll just add a little bit of voiceover here to explain what and why I'm doing. So um, I'm using the white china marker and I'm 
just putting a little bit of line in that area but keeping the values very much the same because I don't want to change the composition uh, of contrast in any way. Adding some more tight and buff, white, and I and here I do change that rectangle to black and it looks much better. That is the yellow oxide. The yellow that you see in the bottom center area on the left of the black vertical circles and uh, that's just, it's a better quality, but I just love this orange. It's a duller, uh, and I don't even know, I think I just add a little bit to the yellow oxide. So you'll see that I will play with the black outer line on the upper left of the piece, and then this little um, half circle cut out uh, like a negative space, I do end up putting it in that area. I just sort of play around and it's funny how uh, certain collages need to go in or you end up putting them in at different stages. I guess after you've made so many decisions, there's all a timing in this thing. It's, uh, it's really interesting that way. So right away I know. Uh, it just feels right. I paint a lot um, and react to the feeling of things, I guess, and that is our intuition that we're using. Uh, but some, but it's a whole learning process as well. Uh, memory, what works, what doesn't work, uh, and you know, I'm always talking about intuition in my videos. It's a, it's, it's a subject that fascinates me. So I'm uh, just cleaning up the edge. I don't want it messy, and that is an elevated rectangular piece with, I don't know if I use cardboard, thick paper, or maybe I've put more collage on top of it. And it's, it's, uh, it looks interesting as it's, um, it's, uh, it, it's a piece of raised it's texture. And I know I forget the term right now. So, uh, please leave a comment. Um, and I love that, uh, that's, that some of you do and uh, add clarification, and you know what? It's all a, it's, we're all on the same journey here, so that's totally fine. Um, that half circle, because I wanted to continue this circle sort of theme, I guess, but meaning, or um, that was a piece of collage made with my Brer newsprint again, and then just punched out with the. Um, I forget the brand, but you can get circles, squares, whatever shape. And uh, I might go get some squares, and so I can punch out exact shapes, but I don't like things all the same, so I only use it once in a while. So here I go, and I play with this uh, black, and right away I know. See how the eye continues? And all of a sudden, since I changed that black to with the same value of that orange or yellow oxide, now that whole shape comes to life and winds up and brings the eye all the way up to the five, six, seven, eight area. Now it's up in that area where I play with the length and the shortness of the black. So it just, I keep playing with it until it feels right. And that's what you can do too. And as I did earlier, um, making sure you can use the soft gel as well to coat your layers of collage, depending on what kind of paper it is and what kind of absorbency it has. So if you do change your mind, it's just easier to wipe right off. And, and that's what I was talking about. So I'm going all the way up. <clears throat> and um, it's okay, but I'm glad. Uh, so stick, stick to the end. So I do change that and bring that little piece of black back in, and it really does. Seeing as you can compare, it does look better. So just uh, hang in there. And um, for the circles, the smaller ones that I'm going to use, I have this little piece of copper pipe. And uh, I don't know about you, I'm always looking around, or if things show up, I'm like, wow. And it makes the most amazing little circles. So that's the uh, tool that I use to continue uh, with the vertical circles or phases or planetoids or orbs or whatever you want to, you know, however you interpret these, in behind the big um, neutral half circle. So as I rub that 
um, upper left hand corner, I could tell uh, that black needs to continue around the five. And uh, I think I'm right in the end. So just playing with, uh, and this is what I meant with adding a layer. Um, I'm going to be using my catalyst wedge and making, uh, using thin layers like this with different, um, different amounts of transparency or translucency, uh, knowing what effects will happen depending on the strength of your saturation, marks, etc., when you put another layer on top and then going back and then coming forward. And it's the switching back and forth that creates this incredible history of your work. And I think that's what's built in this piece. Um, it's interesting, I started, as I was talking about these three pieces before, um, and now I'm going to start working in series of three or series of four, two if it's a big piece, and um, just to be more productive and how also to create a sense of um, just unity across whatever series I'm working in or color palette. And if you missed my other videos with uh, exploring color, don't forget to take a peek at those and I will be continuing with other color palettes. Um, I am sticking with this orange and blue, but it's all the, in the, the ratios. And as you can see, this number one, this one, is the only thing in blue that's, that's a saturated hue, but the turquoise and that little stripe of blue above the five, six, seven, eight, um, uh, is you can see. Now, after this sits, and after this video, and I'll let it sit another night or two, I will, I'm definitely coming, I'm coming into the last stages, as you will see, uh, so I don't overdo it with my Posca markers, <laughs> but here I thought, okay, let's continue some other open shapes, open circles, or with open center, I guess you can call it open, but this, my black, yeah, my white Posca markers, taken a turn. I don't know what happened to it. So I know there's a bunch of you out there that have more experience with these markers. Um, and I also want to try some other ones. <sighs> and uh, the brand names. Yeah, there's that little copper pipe. Uh, elude me right now, but uh, we'll remember or you'll remind me. So thank you very much if you do. Um, there's temper. There's so many paint markers. There's the oil sticks. Oh, look at that. It's perfectly imperfect. And that's what I like about it because it has a little piece of solder that's still on the side. And it's just thick enough. And you see that's another piece of thicker uh, card stock that I put on. So it's elevated. Um, still can't remember the proper word. And so I only, I want to show part of that circle. So I decided, okay, no, it still didn't turn out. So I'm going to just put it on its edge. And then I'm just going to take away, because I want it going behind. So all these layers over and under, intertwining and all of that. So then I, of course, you, you do this, right? It's like, wow, wouldn't that look really good? Okay, now that's the only thing you see or notice. It would be good, but no. It's too much, so I end up just leaving the rectangle black, and then of course you go back in, fix up your little experiment there, and carry on. Um, um, oh, leave a comment. Um, uh, thank you, uh, and I forget your name. Uh, a subscriber mentioned that my intro was a little on the loud side. So for this video, I remembered uh, to turn down the volume, I think 50% in my intro, so it matches the volume of my voice. And I that was really, really smart, uh, noticing that. So let me know if it is good. Let me know if, it's, know if it's too low or still too loud. I would love to hear that. It's always great hearing uh, the, the perspective from the other side. So my black china marker 
And um, so I made those lines. They're okay. I don't know if I like them totally going from that curvy linear shape over to the vertical. And you'll see that I can't make up my mind if I want to rotate, keep the one up straight, or go back to the way it was on its side. So it's the, the little ship um, that's from an encyclopedia, an old book. And um, I love those old diagrams and, and I love the paper, that gorgeous neutral paper. So I know I keep saying that I need to go make some time to go to my bookstore. <sighs> so uh, uh, when I go to work, it's, it's quite a distance. So just getting home and, you know, <laughs> finding enough energy. And you all know what that is like um, as a full-time artist with another full-time job. This really can get a little challenging, but it's not stopping me because this is what I really want to do. So brushing that previous, that underlying value over it, and I am, now that I'm looking at it, either way, uh, but I just like a little bit of paint, and I might even rub a little bit of that off, but definitely wouldn't, won't put any more on. So let's see if I do that or not. So I love my little lines coming down from any black shape, and uh, that's the only set in there. So then I decide, yes, I need to change that up. So carrying, continuing, going off the substrate. And then I notice the black does need to come back. So also when you're going back and forth with each layer, uh, when you do that, it's, it, it, it adds uh, an interesting texture to it. So definitely, I think I bring it down a little bit more. Or yes, that edge needs to be fixed up because it's going right where there's those two values meet. And that's just a, a turquoise-ish collage. Uh, as you remember, that whole Titan buff area was a very strong saturated turquoise at the beginning before I came in. And yes, I'm also snacking on some popcorn while I'm painting, which is totally awesome. <laughs> Let me know what you, what you do when you're sitting there journaling. Do you listen to music? Uh, do you have a little snack? Do you make sure you're drinking enough water? Um, listen to the birds? Um, it, it's always fun to hear what people like to do uh, or like to listen to when they're working. Uh, do you need the music to get you right back to that mode? I remember when I used to work in, with uh, my landscaping. I've talked about this before. But super large paintings. I used to um, play the same song that would get me right back in that mode. And that really helped. So as you can see here, these either vertical or horizontal lines, depending on which way this painting is going to end up, I'm playing with, uh, and at the very beginning, you saw that they were a very bright pink. And you know that there's a little bit of pink in that swoosh of red and orange. So I, I'm just playing with different colors to see which would look better. At first, I thought the yellow oxide would look good, but now it's just too much of the same color. So I needed that punch, and I think I'm just going to leave them right the way they are. So it's sort of a combination of an orangey-pink. Um, and then I try to brush a little bit over that, which is okay, but it took too much of that really nice bright color away. And softening that edge and bringing the eye over, but you know what? Um making more of an angle, sort of defining that shape. Uh, it's sort of uh, like a right angle. And I also end up that half circle that's um, uh, a texture right now, just a shape. I do end up lightening that up a little bit. And then the piece of collage with the white paint on it directly 
down to the left, I end up just lessening the white. It's like a little, fla I call them little flashlights in your painting. So as you can see, I'm playing with saturation and value here. So too close, it just didn't work. I think lighter is the way to go just because it's next to the lighter value, the um, Titan buff. And I covered that with a really good layer of the high gloss medium. So then it allows some wiping away. And there's that little little line of, with the black china marker. So also leave a comment below if you liked more of the live um, talking as I'm painting combination, um, maybe a little live talking, introducing what I'm doing, telling them, telling you about my moves, and then leaving it quiet with some peaceful music. Um, I almost thought of doing that today, but I thought, you know what? No, because enough of you have mentioned that you like me thinking and explaining why and how and what I'm doing. So I think that's an important part. So just let me know. I would love to hear your feedback. So going in with this acrylic ink, and of course it's metallic, and it's very much, so, so this is where I can get carried away. So it's still on there, on my painting. I just don't know if I like it, um, but easily removed if I don't like it. And now it's like, it's okay. Maybe instead of dots, I could have done lines. Maybe it's the shape or the line. And uh, maybe I should have went horizontal at this state. So we'll just, that'll be a tweak at the very end. And coming in, I think I'm going over some black dots. Oh no, creating black dots. And just to carry the eye up, I like those because it's I'm not overdoing it with the Posca marker, as you can, as you have seen in previous videos. Um, it's funny when you first get a new um, art tool or paint or marker, you just love them so much you just want to keep using them. <laughs> but we have to stay present with our art and pay attention to what's going on because that's all part of the process. So here's this little piece. I know it needs to go right in there. I just am playing with, and I don't know if it's a piece of paint on it or what. That little white mark on it, it's sort of bugging me. So I'm not sure. I know it needs to go in there somehow, just because it's, it's a negative um, half circle shape. So no, don't interfere with the rectangle, Michelle. Leave it alone. So there it is. I've left it in the upper left-hand corner here. And we'll see what happens. So noticing that that could pick up a little bit of the uh, Titan buff and the lighter, the lighter value that the um, very light half circle has along with those three in the upper right hand corner, I think that adds. But if I went too bright, then the contrast would be too much and then your eye would stay in there. So here comes just some odd numbers of dots and they work either way, no matter which way I decide to put this painting um, on its side or leave it this way. So we are coming to the end of this phase. So I just realized that I needed to add, oh yes, so here I am. Just covering up, not all of the metallic, just some of it, just to change the shapes. I probably smudged it with my hand or something because that ink takes a lot longer to dry than your usual acrylic paint. Oh, <laughs> so I guess I made my decision. Um, so I'm adding another layer of collage with this really nice, thick, um, handmade paper in these little pieces. So this is sort of picky. So um, so I'm putting in the high gloss medium. So since it's a thick cardboard, you need a heavier, a heavier medium to stick it down. 
So I'm going to bring them in one by one with my little tool. And this is, uh, so definitely the final stages here. Once you get into doing this, you know, and it doesn't need anything else, or even you notice you're overdoing it, and you need to, you need to step back and say to yourself, okay, does this help or interfere, like cause too much? So that's what I've been doing lately, and it has been working. And I think I do just go right along, and I think there's one, two, three, four, five, oh, seven. There's seven, because I love to work with odd numbers. So I don't want anything going across that line, because the eye picks it up right away because of the contrast, and interfering with that half circle. So it's... Uh, very interesting. I still haven't made up my mind yet as to which way this painting is going to go, but um, I'm liking this way. And I just might add one more small curvy, curvy linear, or just to see a little piece of collage in that upper left hand corner where the black stops. And then I might not. It might need it. It might not need it. So uh, this is this is the great part of collage where you can just cut out pieces and see. It might be an orange. I know it's not going to be blue because I just want that number one, that one having the only blue. I might emphasize it in maybe a different area, but it probably will be too much. The one is just making the orange more orange because of its its complementary. I mean, that's the only thing. So this has been a very fun journey with these two 12 by 12s. I have one more to go with this little series, and then I'm going to be starting to move into series of four, another set of three, but with um, starting all together with um, an interesting, oh, look at that orange, how it goes. It just needs to go somewhere. I just don't know where it goes. And it has some of that metallic on it. Sorry to change the subject so quickly, but I just had to had to mention that. Oh, so a little piece of that just makes that other orange. So No, it, that isn't it. So I'm interfering with the black, but I know that this a little piece will fit in there somewhere. So that'll be a tweak at the very end. Um, it probably belongs more in the middle where all of that other orange is, maybe another little square or a shape, maybe even a circle, a full circle, but small, because I notice I don't have any of those. That might go right there. That's right. It emphasized that shape, more the horizontal. Okay, so this is a little small piece of text, and then you notice when now when you're just starting to, you know, just grab little pieces and they're not fitting. It means that there's enough there. And so I hope you've enjoyed this phase of the journey. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.